Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Amplify Your Business. On today's show, we're going to be talking about business planning. It's the new year, and with the new year comes goal setting. And so I have a special guest on today's episode. His name is Matt Hill. He's a business strategist over at the Business Link, and he helps a lot of small businesses with this very thing. Welcome to the show, Matt. Thanks. Thanks, Lance, for having us, inviting us uh, here to speak about planning. Yeah, awesome. I'm so happy to have you guys because when it comes to helping entrepreneurs and small businesses, nobody does a better job than the Business Link. And so tell me a little bit about your role there, and then we'll segue into the business planning part of it. Excellent. So, yeah, I think it's it's worth uh, just pondering on the business on business link uh, for a second here and uh, in fact it's our 25th anniversary this year so since 1996 in various versions various forms business link as an organization has been supporting alberta small business owners and entrepreneurs from those who are starting out to those who are successfully running a business and those who maybe are thinking about well what the future is beyond what their plan is beyond their business as well so really helping entrepreneurs through the broad range of the spectrum. And a large part of the work that I do on a day-to-day -day basis is working directly with small business owners. So the strategist team, of which there are um, about eight of us, uh, some based in Edmonton, I'm based in Brooks, we have people in Calgary, Red Deer, all over the province really. And we work, we're at the front line working with the small business owners. So some people, it's a, we deal with, with small inquiries that might be how to navigate a piece of regulation or how do I, you know, structure my business in the first place? Should, is corporation from, right for me or should I start as a sole proprietor, things like that. Um, but then a large part of what we do is the long, the medium and the longer term engagements with, with business owners, where we will have that relationship with them. And maybe we'll start with a small inquiry, but over time, we may work with them in reviewing their business plan, their marketing plan. We might um, help them brainstorm and think of other um, possibilities, opportunities within their business. Really... <laughs> Where it comes is, you know, it can be lonely, as you know, being a small business owner as an entrepreneur sometimes. And lots of the people we deal with, in fact, are solopreneurs um, who are brand new to business. So having that sounding board, that that uh, connection to uh, someone at Business Link can be really valuable for them. And, you know, to sort of tout our not-for-profit credentials here, we approach it with a... Um, we can be unbiased, impartial, whatever word we choose there. We, we're never trying to really sell anything. And so we can keep that relationship incredibly sort of open and flexible as to the needs of the entrepreneur. So, yeah, that's us. And, and that's how we have. Yeah. And, and actually, I have some firsthand experience with some of the services that you guys provided, because when I was starting my business many years ago, uh, it was the business link was one of the first uh, places that I stopped by to do some market research and to talk to some of the experts there. And then also attended you know, some of the workshops that were happening uh, at the time when we could gather all in person. And, mm. uh, and so there was definitely a bunch of education that I walked away from. I even, you know, having been in the business world for, uh, you know, a number of years prior to that and having gone to business school, uh, it's, uh, it was really useful and really helpful to have those resources there and the support that you guys provide. And so it's, it's something that I think is definitely underutilized in terms of the vast number of entrepreneurs and small business people out there who could use the service. There's such a small percentage of them actually even realize that it's there. And so uh, I encourage anybody who is thinking about starting a business or are already uh, in the middle of a, of a business to reach out if you have any questions, need any support whatsoever. If they can't help you, um, this was the other thing is their network is just so vast that the business link can point you in the right direction to some additional support. And um, their services are free. Um, and then most of the services that they point you to are actually free as well. Um, so it's just an exact, an absolute excellent opportunity for small businesses who are trying to start up or who are cash poor at the moment. Well, that's, uh, uh, the, there is lots of, you're, you're right to, to highlight that there are lots of places we refer people to because the entrepreneur support ecosystem in Alberta is, is really quite vast. But with that, 
with that complex and lots of specialists there to support, it can get confusing or difficult to locate, okay, well, what's the, which is the, what are the right things for me? And so what I see amongst our team are those good referrals being made, you know, to, okay, this is where you're going to really get that bit of information that you need. And I, I mean, particularly with established business owners, we see this all the time. They want the answer. They don't want to go to six different places yeah. to be able to find this information that's necessary necessary for them to move forward they want to come to us if we don't have the answer then and there they need to speak to the right person like and I think over time that's what we've become very very good at, at doing um yeah and we can speak more about the market research services and things like that as we go through or obviously our website's a great place to start but but to that point of there is so much out there for people like the access to the, the databases that we have just surprises me every time that we go in there. You know, the sophistication of the data available that quite often we get lots of requests from very, very new businesses or, or people who are even before starting a business, but there's tremendous value for existing businesses in there. You know, we can pull, pull I pulled something recently that was, um, I wanted to know which businesses in Southeast Alberta were exporting, you know, were exporting. And straight away, I could get a list of 100 businesses, their size, their revenue, um, number of employees, things like that. It's tremendously valuable just for me for some market re some research that I was doing. But, you know, if I was a business, like there's a, there's a potential list of customers there for me or, or whatever it might be. So, yeah, tremendous value for existing um, and new businesses. Exactly. So take advantage of it, everybody. Now, let's talk a little bit about planning day. So we're filming this today. It's the middle of January 2021. And so often at this point in, in the calendar, uh, businesses are planning out what the, the, you know, the coming year is going to look like. Now, COVID, uh, we're still in the middle of that uh, situation. And so when it comes to planning, it's difficult to really know how to accommodate you know these kinds of situations within the plan itself and so I know for myself I've always considered the business plan as being something that is very much a living document something that you adjust as conditions change because with uh, you know the business is the only constant it seems like for my business anyway has always been just change it's constantly changing so how do you approach that or what would be some of your advice as people are looking to try to figure out how to plan out the next 12 months when we're in the middle of this pandemic? Yeah, it'd be great to go back and look at those plans uh, that were made 12 months ago. And uh, yeah, the best laid plans of mice and men, I think that's it. That's what it would, would come to. But and I, I think that's really important that we see that as an active process. It's business planning not the business plan and it's done and it's dusted. Um, and so I think, I think a great starting point is to identify what it is you're looking to achieve, you know, and having those clearly set out goals because the ways that we get to those goals can, can vary, you know, like if, if the, what I want to achieve is clearly stated, clearly understood, and we look at words like vision or mission statement or, or those things, but I really just think we don't need to use to use those terms. I think we, we, they're just sort of, they're good guiding principles. You know, what do, what is it that I really want um, as a great starting point? And if we can focus that on what we want to do for our customers, I think that's even better. Because quite often what I meet with our, our, biz, our potential business owners who are not sure about why they want to go into business or why they're in business at all. And, and I think identifying that is really, really important. And for lots of small business owners, that can be, it's personal or it's lifestyle. You know, like one of the things that I want is control, some control over my own schedule or the ability to, um, to, to control to choose my working day or, or those things like that I think they're important <laughs> and I think they have to be deliberate and be planned for yep. um, but also I think in terms of your business like what is it that you're wanting to achieve or for your clients which needs of your clients are you hoping to meet so clearly identifying those but then perhaps being open and flexible as to how I achieve those things I always think of it as like the, the person who wants a cupcake bakery as opposed to the person who wants P 
people to enjoy cupcakes. Because, you know, like the customer is the same there, isn't it? Like what we're doing for them. And, and maybe year one, having this perfect cupcake bakery isn't possible. Like that's, it maybe is, that's an evolution. That's somewhere where I'm hoping to get to. But my customer, I'm, I'm still aiming or finding ways to meet my customer needs. Uh, and so whether that's through, I don't know, delivery or finding another way of doing it, that's the flexible thing. But yeah, choosing, okay, what are our aims? What are, what are we hoping to achieve? I think is really an important starting point. Yeah, and I think that example is really great because with the pandemic, if you use that same example, the person who wants to have a cupcake store um, you know, it, it wasn't possible. <laughs> it got shut down uh, due to the restrictions in that. And so if it's about serving the customer, then, you know, pivoting to online and pickup and delivery and everything else, um, and maybe some, uh, you know, home kits and different things that would enable people to make it themselves too. That is a, a pivot that you would make if you have that as your goal at the outset, as opposed to like what you mentioned, the uh, the person who's just looking for the store. Yeah, and, and I think that's that definitely were the with the successful pivots or shifts that we saw. You know, they they recognized okay their their customers' needs had changed, some in very, very dramatic ways. You know, their customers' needs had changed. How can our business shift towards them? It's not a complete redirection, it's not a pivot. We're not now going to go into the business of I don't know, doing something completely different. Mm -hmm. um, we're still looking to meet the needs of our, our changing customers. Um, and that really, I suppose, is a, a core fundamental when it comes to planning and, and putting that in place. Okay, so so what are some of the other advice that you give or what are, what are the next steps in the business planning um, that you would recommend that businesses take a look at following at this point? But I would say always plan for a purpose, like for have something in mind. So quite often we get the inquiry, I need help with a business plan. And I will always say, well, why do you need a business plan? And I'm not saying like, don't, don't plan your business and don't write a business plan even, but understand why you're writing it, because it's going to be incredibly different document. Um, the research involved is going to be different. And um, your approach will be different if you're, if you're, writing this for the man at ATB, or if you're writing this for yourself and your team and your family. Mm. Uh, and in, there'll be inevitably incredibly difficult documents. So first of all, understand why you're writing it. You write it for the audience or you plan for the, for the audience. Um, and to that, yeah, and, and on that point, I think that's where the sort of the pre-planning comes in, comes in. Again, something I notice quite often are business owners writing a business plan or, or prospective business owners writing a business plan for a loan that they're never going to get in the first place. And, and, and this may sound a little bit harsh, but you know, until you have that early conversation with the bank or visit their website, go through, have a look, which loan products you might be eligible for, what type of financing you're likely to, to get, it's really probably premature to start writing this business plan um, because there are already, there are, um, eligibility criteria. There are expectations that you might have to actually work towards, <laughs> you know, it might be three or four years before you are ready to apply, uh, mm. you know, and, and in harsh terms, for instance, like to use an example, like if you've got a very low credit score, the chances of you going and getting a business loan from a from a main 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 bank lender it's, it's probably really really small so you're going to have to work on that you have to you know think okay how am I going to bridge myself to that point um so yeah planning and only creating a business plan with an audience in mind I think is so important okay excellent yeah and and we do I mean and I can share now um some of the tools that I would sort of suggest some tools to start with and then I can go through we have a business plan builder on the business link website if you have need to write a more formal business plan so yes why don't we do that why don't you show us a few of the tools then that you guys recommend or that you use over at the business link perfect thanks that's uh, that's great I'm just going to share uh, my screen in here just so yeah. uh, we can see um excellent so the place that i'm going to start right now is on the business link website like i say we have like a range of resources newsletter article events 
for business owners. But our latest edition here is the actual business plan writer. Um, and it's because it's brand new there, we've got a, a get started button right at the top, uh, which you can go through. I'm not going to go through like the registration, setting up account, all that process. It's it's hopefully pretty intuitive for people, but you feel free to always uh, reach out. We have chat if you need to. But you'll come to the place where you have to start writing this business plan. But like I said previously, this is the business plan. You know, this is the, the document that you're going to create that, yeah, it's not set in stone, but it's something that you're probably going to present to someone externally. Um, maybe it's for financing, something like that. Before doing this, the two thing, the two tools that I would use to really get my head, head around this planning process, and this can be existing businesses or brand new businesses. Uh, first of all, the value proposition canvas. Now, I just think and there's so much great information online. You can go and Google and find out more about this tool. Um, but I just think it's a great place for businesses to really get understanding of what do we do? Um, what needs do we meet from our customers? Who are, who's our target segment? Who's our target market? And what value do we create for them? And this tool, I mean, we could do a three hour session on this alone, uh, I'm sure of it, but it really gets us to focus on, okay, what are our customers trying to achieve? What are they looking to get done? Like, are they looking to satisfy their hunger? Are they looking to have, I don't know, uh, somewhere enjoyable to take their partner? Like, what are they trying to do? What pains do they have with existing, uh, situ with existing providers or the fact that they can't, get the things that they want, what gains are they hoping to achieve? And so we really start by looking at our, who our customer are. And this will feed through ultimately to a good business plan. And then how do our products and service deliver on those needs? How do they solve those problems? How do they bring those clients benefit? And they just, this is the tool I come back to again and again and again. Getting business owners who at times, <sighs> They, their businesses, you know, can be incredibly complex, you know, and they have HR issues to manage and they have financials to manage. They have so many things, but actually it, we all know it comes back to what value am I providing my customers? You know, and, and, and that's, that's so important. So that, that's a great tool. And then once we've got a, a clear idea of this, we can use this as a basis for our um, market research. So we can go, okay, I think that my customers' pains are these, but unless I go and speak to them or observe them and find out in some way, how can I really be sure of that? Um, so I think this is a great place to capture those hunches and those best guesses, those things. And then I think there's a second step to it there of testing that. And, and that can be through secondary market research, like the, the research we provide. But quite often it's through your maybe speaking to your existing customers, going out and speaking to people who you would like to have as customers and finding out do your assumptions hold true? Because that's yeah, such an important part of the planning. Yeah. And I think the real point that I really would like to pound home here as well is in our business, when we're helping other businesses with their marketing and trying to position themselves as the ideal solution provider they they have to we have to walk through this process with the client if they haven't already done it themselves and so uh, one of the things that i find is that there's so few companies actually out there that do this uh, for themselves very well and and as the company evolves they have to kind of take another look at it because oftentimes what was the unique selling proposition you, you had a particular audience in mind at the beginning when you started your business, things change over time. And so it's good to update that and refresh that. But that is the place that you need to start, like you said, uh, on the market research part of it, aids in that. But then once you get rolling, how do you actually get in front of those people? It helps you identify that. And it also helps you identify what the messaging needs to be that's going to really motivate these people to you know, click on that ad or click on that social post um, or you know, stick around and read another page on your website. Yeah, that's it. It's the core. Of that. And, and I, I like the fact that you mentioned that messaging there um, because in identifying our, our 
our value proposition, our unique value proposition, we're so many steps ahead of many, many of our competitors because they just can't, they're just not quite there. They can't articulate yeah. what it is that makes them different. And I recognize it's hard. I was in a session yesterday, a business link um, internal training where we were looking at some of this ourselves. And when you're reflecting it on your own business and what you do every day, because again, they're complex organizations where there's lots happening, lots going on. It's hard sometimes to put it back to a single sentence as to, Okay, why are we exceptional? Why do we stand apart? What makes us different to other yeah. service providers or people offering this? Um, yeah. but, but it's at the core. And then, so once we have that value proposition canvas complete, something that we can plug it into, um, and this is sometimes called a one-page business plan, and, and it's not, uh, but it's a way of capturing your business plan on a single page. So it's it's... I think it's really good at helping us identify, well, what are the key bits? What, what's really, really important to us? And what can we play with? What levers we can pull? And I'm not going to go through um, section by section of this in the time that we have. But again, Business Model Canvas, lots of really great information online um, for how this tool can be used by businesses to identify okay, what is it important that we do in our business? Like what are the what are the key activities? Who really are our key partners that if they if we lose that relationship, things are going to get away from us and it's going to be difficult to replace them. Uh, what our existing revenue streams are and do we see any potential for new revenue streams or do we see any threats from revenue streams? So it really gets us by putting it on a single on a single sheet there to identify what maybe some of the key risks are and some of the opportunities that we see for our business. Um, but that orientation around our customer and the value that we provide from them, that really isn't going anywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's such a good tool. And so once we've done some of that pre-planning and like I said, understanding the value that we bring, we may, they men, sorry, we then may decide that it's time to write a more formal business plan. Um, and, there are many, many solutions out there for people to use. Um, most of the banks will have templates, pro formas, and uh, things that they can do. We can buy software. I know B plans and is out there and subscription services. And none of these are bad products. I don't get, I think there's some really, really good, useful products out there and some great blogs. Um, and yeah, there are many ways to do this. Really with our business plan writer, I just want to highlight some of the things that I think are um, advantages to using it more than anything. So yeah, the, the approach is pretty simple. So um, we start a new business plan and it's, it's a piece of software, it's on the cloud, so we can, we can work at it. These are the, the areas that we're going to add to over time and, you know, business description most of these are pretty um self-explanatory uh, but they also have the some of the the great things about this is there are some tips here on how to fill this in it says in a, in a bit more detail of what um needs to go there but i really like some of these examples that we see here um they're not quite uh, copy and paste to put them in and change them yourself but at least it gives you a starting point of the type of uh, type of thing that um, your financial institution is going to expect in this section of the business plan. Yeah, and I so think the, the examples are brilliant because that really does allow somebody to, you know, understand the context of what you need to have in those uh, spots. And so some of the uh, templates that I've seen in the past and that I've navigated through are pretty blank or they have this additional document that you have to kind of cross-reference to having it all in one place. This is a beautiful design. So well done. Oh, thanks. Yeah. And, and, uh, yeah. And, and then the, the format is pretty, is pretty simple. Uh, you know, it's a box. We ask that you make sure you save your work. There is a, an, there are little mechanisms to make you encourage you to save more often, uh, because that's really obviously important that no work's lost there. Um, and then there's opportunities to add things, appendices at the end. And then, so once you've gone through the process of adding your information to, these text boxes um, as we go through. It, you have the opportunity to export the um, export it, but also the, the, the main thing that I wanna draw people's attention to uh, is this aspect. So once you've completed your business plan, 
you can submit it for a review and someone like myself or one of my colleagues are going to do a business plan review for you. We're going to look through and then look through the document that you create. And, and in most cases, probably set up a meeting with you afterwards and um, to talk through, or if it suits you better to provide email and feedback. More often than not, I find a conversation uh, easier in that way. So that's you sort of once we get to the end, you it doesn't have to be, OK, well, I've done it. Now what? We can have a conversation about, OK, how are you going to apply this? How are you going to use it? What are the next steps for you? So that's sort of one way of communicating, which I think is really important. Uh, but the second part of it, and I do think this is the thing that makes it different, is that as you're going through it and let's say you get to the the dreaded financials uh, and you're, you encounter a problem or you're finding difficulty in doing this. Um, really, we've made it as easy as possible, um, sorry, to just to contact. Um, and you can say, okay, connect with one of us, one of the strategist teams. We'll aim to get back within two days. Obviously, at the weekend, that was going to be a bit longer, but in most cases, it's going to be faster than two days. Um, and you can say, okay, the area I am struggling with is financials. And you can set, you can explain your need and we'll get back and we'll, we'll support you on that section. No one's going to write it for you. You probably wouldn't want us to write it for you, or maybe. Uh, <laughs> uh, but at least we can, we can, well, quite often there's overwhelm with doing a business plan. We yeah. get to a section and it becomes a barrier that we feel that we can't move beyond. But at least with this tool, um, we are there to support you through that. That's, that's absolutely amazing. And again, no cost, right? There's no cost to the entrepreneur to tap into somebody who's actually going to review, read through it, provide that one-on-one -on -one consultation and point you in the direction of anything that maybe is a stumbling block or something that they have identified as something that you need. That That's just, it's, it's mind boggling to me that this tool is available because Normally, I mean, to tap in the consultants of your guys' caliber, we're talking thousands of dollars of, of value of, to tap into the time of, of a consultant. And so this is all absolutely free, great tool, really super simple. I love it. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, it's been quite some time in development. And really, we are fortunate that we have those funders, um, you know, primarily the province of Alberta and the government of Canada. Um, that allow us to be able to do this work, you know, like, and it goes back to our market research databases. Like these are resources that would have been, they're just too expensive for many small businesses to access themselves. Um, and so really they're being provided um, through us because yeah, to make it affordable and to make it work. So um, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. I love it. And so the types of questions that you're getting right now, um, from small business people, I'd love to hear just some of those, some some of the things that uh, people are saying or asking you about as they're trying to do this this planning through the pandemic. Do you have any stories that you can share with us? So, okay, so specifically through at, at this time the pandemic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so quite often we are seeing people who are sort of challenged in looking beyond the the current time you know and so and, and i completely understand it like if your restaurant is closed now you are hurting now really the idea of thinking and planning for six months time is like how do you even do that like if, if you don't know if you're going to be open or not and so like the the honest part of that is is it's it's incredibly difficult um and that you know, thinking about, I suppose, splitting that into like the short term emergency crisis planning and how you're responding to the situation right now. And quite often that's around cash flow, immediate financial management, things like that. And then there may be some marketing decisions that can be, be made. But if your barbershop's closed, your barbershop's closed. <laughs> you know, there, there are those really, really difficult things. But then I suppose it's it's that longer term planning of, okay, what's going to make me sustainable and manage the future ups and downs? Um, and we do, yeah, we do get questions around that, okay? You know, of like I, I'm in a, an area where oil and gas has been strong for a long time and there are businesses who have relied on that, but now they're having to think about new opportunities. So quite often the questions that we get, I mean, it's back to your area, is how do I market to new groups? 
like to new groups of customers who maybe I haven't even have to, had to be that active in marketing in the past. Um, perhaps business has come to me. I've, I've existed in my small town or here, uh, and we've been good at what we've done for a long, for, for a long time. Um, and so, yeah, we are seeing those, those marketing questions come in. Yeah. And, and so I, again, that kind of goes back to that, um, persona, the, the buyer persona that you're working on and trying to identify what your opportunities or advantages are to be able to sell to them, what their needs are. And so in that example, you have a market that completely shifted in the sense where uh, they were serving the oil and gas customers as an example, and then that starts to dry up. Well, it, it's not that their business doesn't have something else to offer to other segments of customers, that maybe those other segments weren't the priority when the going was good with the oil and gas customer. But now when they have to pivot, they can identify that and go through that business planning process again and the analysis and really try to shake out where those new opportunities might rest because odds are you probably have a service or a product that has a wider appeal than just what was historically your primary um, low hanging fruit customer, so to speak. And absolutely. And I, I, I see examples of, of that with um, businesses who are, again, oil and gas businesses that now their, their main government, sorry, they're, they're providing services to government, um, municipal government, provincial government, and, and places like that. So we're definitely seeing that. Um, but it's it's not an easy shift to make, and there are sometimes some big decisions, business decisions that need to be made um, to to move in one direction or another. Yeah. Um, just on that note, just for anyone uh, listening, we we're hosting in early February a selling to the government um, of Alberta webinar. Yeah. And that's accessible through our website, and so just be aware. Yeah, yeah, I I saw that actually uh, come across my inbox. Um, so again, if anybody's interested in selling to government, there's a webinar that's com coming up hosted by Business Link. What's the date on that? February? Um, it's early February. Early February. I was looking this morning. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just uh, head over to businesslink.ca. Yeah. Slash events. Yeah. yeah. Um, and another aspect that we're seeing in terms of talking about new markets and planning for that, we've, we've just launched our export readiness program. And that really is all about planning for the future and, mo and moving products and services to new markets outside of Alberta. Um, and hence like the market research you were doing that you referenced as an example to find yeah. all the exporters, right? So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But this, this program is so good. It really gets business, it, it, it prepares businesses to get to that point of being ready to export. Because once you're export ready, there are actually quite a few services out there for you. Export readiness, Canada, sorry, Export Development Canada um, and the Trade Commissioner Service. There are services there for you. But to get to that point where you're ready to access those services is a bit of a gap. And so the Export Readiness Program that we've developed, again, it, it's free. Um, it gets you to look at a market entry plan. So to identify which markets that you think there's potential and then what market research do you need to do to 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 get an understanding of whether your assumptions are right, your guesses are right. And then, okay, what are the steps that you're going to have to take to get to that point of being export ready? Um, so yeah, it, it's that's definitely something to explore from the planning uh, point of view as well. Yeah, that's really good. Okay, so I'd love to hear from your perspective, having worked with so many businesses on their business planning, um, where does the stumbling block or the failures occur on the implementation side of that. So there's the effort that goes into building out the plan. What stops people from achieving those plans? And just uh, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that in large part, um, you know, okay. and that, that might not be a fair question completely because there's such a variety of potential reasons why people don't execute on the plans. But I was just wondering if there was a kind of a common thread that you see um, at times when you're working with small businesses. So, okay, so the, the area that I see where there's this most difficulty is that when we come to putting together our cash flow forecast, for instance, mm -hmm. there comes to be that box where I've got to estimate uh, revenue. <laughs> 
And most things I can be pretty certain of in my plan. You know, like I can know what I'm going to call my business. I can know what I'm going to structure my business as and, 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 that, and, and other things. I know what lots of my costs are and things. But when it comes to estimating revenue, that's um, a really difficult thing to do. And so quite often that like, we see an, an, a best guess or my capacity is this, therefore my revenue's got to be this. Um, and so we see those guesses of, of revenue and our whole, the rest of the business plan really is predicated on that. Like it's, yeah. it's important that that number, I reach this number, otherwise the rest doesn't really make sense. But where I see the gap more often than not is any, any real clear way of how am I going to get to that revenue level? And I mean, it's a, it's often a marketing plan. And I know I've mentioned marketing lots already, mm. but that tends to be the weakness. You know, like a marketing plan is not your brand. You know, it's not what font you're going to use, as, as you know. Um, it's how you're going to get to your revenue. You know, like how are you going to generate revenue? And that is quite often where we see the, the problems. You know, we'll open, and we even get to the position of opening day one. And and that plan, oh, now I've got to think about how am I going to generate customers and bring people in? Um, what I'm going to do to build awareness? How am I going to advertise? That's where, that's most often where I see the problem come. People tend to be very good technicians. You know, like if I'm a house painter, I'm only going to start my business if I think I'm good at painting houses. Like, otherwise I'll just work for someone else, do a bad job and take my paycheck. Like, you know, um, whereas if I, yeah. And only go into it myself. So they're good at that part, but how to bring those customers in, it's more often than not the area I see people struggle with. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's a really good observation because I think one of the challenges that we as business people have is that we are wearing so many hats. And so, like you said, it, most people are starting a business because they're really good at something that they do. So, painting, as the example goes. And so then they're like, okay, I, tired of working for somebody else or I think I can turn this into a business I can retain more money or I have more flexibility in my schedule or whatever the reason is for that starting of that business but they tend to be a, a great practitioner or executor of whatever that service is or product is and then becomes the challenge on they have to be the salesperson they also have to be the accountant they also have to uh, you know, this accountant slash bookkeeper, they have to be the person who's actually delivering on the, on the goods and so on and, and manufacturing and everything else, depending on the type of business they have. And so there's usually certain things that you kind of put off because they're uncomfortable. And oftentimes I've seen anyway, is sales, not, and then the marketing, the marketing part of it, um, oftentimes there's a lot of unknowns there and they just don't have the skills for it. But on the sales side, it's just one of those things that it's like, oh, I don't really want to do the cold calling or I don't want to reach out and it's uncomfortable. And so it ends up being one of the first things that people don't do or what happens is they start, they get that sale and then they get busy executing on the sale because they have that hat on and they forget that they have to continually do business development to keep the, the queue full so that the, they can move on to the next and the next and the next. Um, and so what ends up happening is that they have these spikes and then dips. And so then that average revenue that they forecast uh, isn't achieved. It's a lot lower because of the dips. Yeah. And, and that's it. It's, it's, not, it's hard to sustain, particularly if you have a, a, an operation that's more than just yourself as well, or, you know, a location or whatever it might be um, to weather those difficult times. I mean, it's going slightly off topic, but uh, I always like to talk about it as much as possible. That, uh, the book E-Myth. Uh, by mm -hmm. Michael Gerber. I mean, it, it's talking about what the conversation that we're having here, but I just think it's essential reading for any entrepreneur um, starting a business or in business because there are mistakes. Like I run a business, like I, I know, like those who say like blind spots or things that I just didn't want to deal with. Like I was very happy. It was early uh, in AdWords and, and Facebook ads time when it was a, a simpler to do and, and it was easy. It was easier, it felt like. Um, and I was very happy sitting behind my laptop doing that. Like you say, the idea of going and having difficult calls and cold calls, just to, it would have been more, to be honest, it would have been more effective than what I was doing, but it's just not quite as comfortable. So, yeah. 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 So then you avoid it. And then, you know, one day turns into a week, turns into a month, turns into <laughs> a year that, that you've 
you know, not done the things that really are going to drive that business forward. And so one of the things that when I'm talking to the ones, the businesses that are really successful is they identify where those weaknesses are and they try to surround themselves with support to shore up those weaknesses. And I know for some smart startups, there just isn't uh, any capital or cash on hand to maybe invest in that. Uh, but sometimes you can, and the return is actually really good and it keeps you focused on the things that you're, you're good at and allows somebody else, whether it's an internal person or your outsourcer or whatever, um, to really do the things that are the, those gaps. And that's one of the things like when I look at partnerships, the partners, uh, ships that really seem to thrive. They have very different people in the partnership where somebody's really good at the numbers and the management of the business part of it, the finances and so on. And somebody's really good at the business development side or somebody's really good uh, technician or, or, or practitioner, right? Who can deliver on the promises. And so uh, the, that's having that balance, whether it's partners whether it's internal or outsourced, really will help you out, I think, in the long run. And I think, I know we're sort of probably running a bit short on time, but I just want to make a comment there that I, yeah, people can be cash strapped at the start, but it is, there is no point in starting a business that you've not received the correct legal advice or the correct accounting advice. Like it just, you, that need, that's an essential startup cost. Uh, for me like I just think it be, it's it's so important to get that right but the other part of this is by identifying okay what your strengths are and weaknesses is that okay you might not be able to go out and hire someone like you, I would recognize that one of my weaknesses would be bookkeeping like to start my business again it would be one of the first people I would engage but if I really didn't have the money to do that I got to I got to do it like, and I've got to put some focus and some energy and some time and some effort and maybe get some training to, to do it. Um, but I've got to address it. The problem comes when we just don't address it. And, mm. and so I think, yeah, there's a couple of really important things there, but yeah, hi, hiring for your weaknesses is the, as the ideal or partnering or even choosing a business model where your weaknesses become less relevant. Yeah. You know, like if, if sales and business development is really not a key strength of yours, well, perhaps your business model is much more about subcontracting with one or two big providers of, of a service. You know, maybe you're a great website designer, but you don't want to have that daily grind of sales and marketing. You maybe need to you maybe need to have a single customer or two customers who are a couple of marketing agencies. You know, like your business model, yeah, it doesn't have to be the same for everyone. Yeah, very, very good point. Matt. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you walking us through that tool, uh, emphasizing, you know, the support that you guys have in addition to the tool, because I, I mean, as the old saying goes, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail essentially, right? And so when it comes to businesses, we always want to have a starting point that is planned out that we've given some thought to. We've done, you know, that research, we've done the, the critical thinking on it. And then we have a, you know, a blueprint sort of roadmap that we can follow knowing that we're gonna deviate. There's gonna be things that are gonna happen, uh, but it's a document at least that can apply some of that focus because if you can write down some of that stuff, yeah, it's something that is going to keep you on track better than if you don't for sure. So the best thing you guys can do uh, coming you know, into a new year in the middle of this pandemic is lay down a plan regardless of how uncertain the times are, because it will help no matter what it'll help. Thank you so much, Lance. That's a great point to end on. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So thanks again, uh, Matt, really appreciate it. How can people find you or reach out to you if they wanted to get in touch with you? So yeah, absolutely. The Business Link website is a great place to start. If you want to reach the team generally, we have online chat there. We have our phone number, emails. My, my own email is matt at businesslink.ca, M-A-T-T. -T. It's, it's a nice and easy one. Um, so yeah, feel free to reach out uh, in that way as well. So yeah, we're very uh, open here and uh, ready to speak. Okay. So everybody take advantage of that. Matt is uh, definitely a world of resources right there at your fingertips through email. So uh, reach out to him and tap into that resource. So uh, we're going to wrap up this episode then. If you have any uh, desire to learn some more about marketing, about uh, some other 
uh, tips and tricks in terms of growing your business, as well as hearing some inspirational stories of other entrepreneurs who are doing the exact same thing that you're doing, then head over to our archives at amplimedia.com forward slash amplify. You'll see all the past episodes listed there, as well as all our future episodes as they uh, get released as well. So thanks again, Matt. Really appreciate it. Take care. Stay safe, everybody.